Yeah. Yeah. So management of atopic dermatitis from pediatrician's point of view. So basically we know that it's a chronic pruritic condition usually involving your flexors and face and usually starts before the age of two years. So main diagnostic point will be itchy skin with erythematous scaly lesions on the skin. And there may be a personal history of atrophy in the family. And below the age of 18 months, usually it involves cheek and your sins, but otherwise it generally involves the flexors. Usually we know that it affects about 20% of the children and in 60% of the patients it develops in first year of life and 10 to 30% continue to have the problem during adulthood. There is an interplay between genetic predisposition, immunological dysfunctions, skin barrier defect and environmental insults. And when we talk of environmental insults, usually it is dry environment which causes transhibitable water loss and so it is very common in northern side of the country. And there can be skin barrier defect, which facilitates the entry of chemicals, irritants and allergens. Soaps can be one of the most important irritant. And also it changes the pH of skin and thereby it allows the allergens to enter through the skin barrier. And you can develop Ig like response and sometimes food allergies. So skin barrier defect increases the chance of skin infection in general. So usually it is seen in the infants between eight to 12 weeks of age, usually dry, scaly, red lesions with excoriations because they're itching and predominantly involves chicks. Napkin area is uh, spared. That is very classical. And that may help you in differentiating from other skin disorders which are having similar situations. And there can be discoid eczema, which may have an atomic eczema on the background. And if you look at toddlers and preschool, they are more mobile. And because of that, extensions are more involved, like wrists, elbows, ankles, and knees. And there can be gradual change to flexural involvement and scratching leading to excoriations. And in school children, usually it involves flexors, eyelids, earlobes, neck, and excoriation leads to lots of scratching and then thickening of skin, that is lichenification, and may need to rule out contact dermatitis in some locations like perioral and postural thigh because these are the lesions which we can see in adulthood or adolescence in atopic dermatitis. So you will assess the severity based on the body surface area which is involved, the frequency and intensity of the flesh and quality of life. If these are involved in a very major way, then you have to act a little more aggressively. And there are various scoring systems like eczema area and severity index, your severity scoring of atopic dermatitis, then your six area, six sign, atopic dermatitis, all those things may help uh, in, in your assessment. And how will you manage? Usually, definitely any chronic condition, you have to educate the parents and counsel them about the condition and the long-term treatment which is required and what are the do's and don'ts and specific measures to be taken. Without that, you will fail in your diagnosis. And you have to definitely target your barrier defect, immunological dysfunctions, and detrimental environmental exposures. Genetic defects may be our leading thing in the future. So at first consult, as I told you, we have to consult and counsel them well and explain about the modalities of treatment. And the mainstay of our treatment remains topical therapies and where sometimes we err. Commonly, we prescribe those combo ointments and creams for any skin lesion, which you should avoid because it can lead to many problems. So here it will be moisturizers, topical corticosteroids, topical calcidurin inhibitors, and your wet wrapping. And sometimes in a severe case, you may require phototherapy or systemic therapies like antihistaminics, immunotherapies, and oral steroids. So how do you use moisturizers? Fill the crevices, then they will smoothen the skin and increase this flexibility. It prevents evaporation and thereby maintains the moisture. And also it attracts and holds water and maybe draw water from the skin and keep the dermis moist and it reduces itching. And some moisturizers containing ceramides, cholesterol, and three pathetis in the ratio of three is to one is to one can be very helpful in severe cases. Then major of the moistures are available in following things like ointments, creams, lotions, and oils. So when you will use what? Usually ointments are the ones with the thicker ones should be used for thicker, thicker skin lesions because it penetrates a lot. 
and it's not uh, it usually is not uh, acceptable cosmetically because it's seen when you apply but the most common things we use is creams and it is generally quite okay for a moderate type of lesion and lotions will be used mainly for hairy area and larger areas because oils or uh, sort of uh, creams or ointments may not be there and oils will be like mild occlusive like coconut oil or sunflower oil but definitely you'll avoid mustard oil and olive oil which are commonly used in certain area for uh, oil uh, application on the newborns and that can be detrimental so what should be an ideal moisturizer be is it reduce and prevent the transdermal epidermal water loss it should repair or restore the lipid barrier it should be hypoallergenic fragrance free non comedogenic and minimum preservative should be there and it should be absorbed quickly to hydrate the skin and it should be cosmetically acceptable but most of the time we know that if it is not really having good fragrance they are not really acceptable so sometimes organic type of perfumes or fragrances are allowed and how to use much is very important frequent application two to three two three times in a day it should be liberal use if you are using a jar you use spatula rather than finger and it should be downward application in one direction rather than up and down to avoid uh, uh, the problems of uh, follicular inflammation and apply immediately after bath so as the type more and more moisture on the skin is very important and uh, can preserving skin barrier prevent atopic dermatitis and atopic march there are conflicting evidences but ultimately the result at present says that it may not prevent your atopic march but if you apply from the, the time where it is feasible it may preserve your skin and moisture and may avoid getting atopic dermatitis and then of course when your moisturizers don't work then you have topical corticosteroids which is again a very common anti inflammatory drug which is used it should be used intermittently for short periods for acute flares of disease and there are two types of approaches one is reactive and second is proactive reactive is when you get acute flares and you use for short periods of 7 to 14 days and proactive is when you control it by using it for short period and then you use intermittently one or two times in a week and continue to preserve the remissions and avoid the remissions or rather uh, avoid the uh, repeat inflammations and there are of course mild type of steroids moderate type of steroids strong and very strong but let us stick to as pediatrics to hydrocortisone or dizonide because avoid using those stronger ointments which are commonly available with combinations and we should avoid and how to use it it's a once a day application sufficient for moisturizer we have to apply more more frequently in larger quantity here once a day and repeated application may lead to tachyphylaxis and may lead to atrophy of the skin so it should not be used and it definitely helps in reducing cephalococcal load on the skin surface but should be used for short duration and patients and parents should be adequately counseled because otherwise they keep on applying again and again without consulting doctor and that leads to problems and how to choose a typical steroid like thick lesions you may need potent steroids potency depends upon mild moderate and severe as i told you most of the time we should be using low potency on areas with thin skin or occluded areas and of course in newborns and some of the delicate areas like scrotum and delivery vehicle can be ointment or lotion depending on the thickness of the lesion if it is thick definitely you will prefer ointment if there is a larger area or hairy area you will prefer lotions and so basically how we choose is based on site of application as i told you you have sensitive areas like axilla and groin or face and genitalia where you definitely need lower potency and duration of treatment can be for shorter duration in terms of steroids and can be used for maintenance intermittently once the acute flare is settled but don't use it for a very long time or repeatedly otherwise lead to lots of many other problems and definitely in neonates and infants low potency and families with low understanding should preferably be prescribed lower potency steroids because they are definitely going to repeat those applications without consulting you and uh, you need to be measure is always a fingertip unit that is amount that can be squeezed from a finger tip to tip to the first crease of the finger with a 5 mm diameter nozzle which consists of ftu and this is equal to 0.5 g of medication and it can cover area equal to two palms of the person measuring the ftu and uses to be explained in ftu to avoid both overuse as well as underuse this is very important and these are various complications but i like to stress on more of hypopigmentation when you apply steroids for a very longer time because many times they will come with erythematous lesion and they'll again come back that my child is developing white skin whether that they leading to leukodermma so that is an apprehension in patient's mind and then of course photosensitization cortic uh, tachyphylaxis and your contact dermatitis 
And then when both these fails, moisturizer and steroid, then you have a steroid sparing ointment. That is your tacrolimus or pimacrolimus. These are very uh, in different strength. Tacrolimus 0.03 and 0.1. Usually 0.03 usually used for uh, avoiding steroids in the initial stage. But when it is very thick lesion, very prolonged lesion, then may you choose for 0.11, which is equivalent to moderate or potent steroids. TCR spirit pairing and usually can be used during flare of atopic dermatitis or as maintenance after using TCS initially during the flare. And for maintenance, TCI can be used one or two times in a week rather than going very frequently because very costly. So use sparingly. And then systemic therapy usually is not required, but if you require to give oral antihistamines, usually we prefer antihistamines with sedative effect rather than the ones which we usually prefer without sedative effect because here the child needs to sleep and needs to avoid its crest cycle. And all steroids usually should be left to dermatologists rather than we as a general pediatrician should be using it. And systemic therapy again is not our field of uh, or our arena as a pediatrician. I will always prefer you to refer to a dermatologist rather than indulging into oral steroids. And of course, environment manipulation is very important. Keep the surrounding environment of child cool as it is inducing itching. Keep nails sore to prevent excoriations. Prefer cotton clothes. Avoid woolen and synthetic garments. Cut inside labels for neck area of shirts or t-shirts to avoid irritation. These are very, very practical tips and pets may be removed if benefits outweigh the psychological trauma it can cause to the child, especially the furred animal should be avoided. And prompt treatment of secondary infection, suspect contact reactions if resistant lesions and suspect food allergy if there is resistant atopic dermatitis, assess family dynamic compliance is poor and assess sleep pattern of the child and also assess any school absenteeism because this will foretell you about the psychological issues. And bathing, very important, bathing in preferred then wipe and wash as babies are calmer and less in heat loss, you should be using more of cleansers rather than soap and scrubbing should be avoided. And five to 10 minutes bath is ideal as prolonged bath can cause pH changes and reduces the threshold for friction and bath at least once daily. And if you are going to use moisturizers immediately after bath, apply moisturizer to preserve the moisture on the skin. And cleansing, as I told you, usually liquid cleansers are always preferred or sometimes you can get cleanser soap. So all those things you can keep where pH is 5.5 rather than alkaline pH. And of course it depends on cost and the availability, which are sometimes a limiting factor. And ideal cleanser as usual will be mild, liquid, without fragrance and color-free, minimum preservatives, acidic or neutral pH and affordable. And of course your wipes are always similar kind, alcohol-free, appropriately preserved, it should be emollient with acidic pH and should be a cleanser on the wipe. And role of probiotics and prebiotics, again, a very controversial issue. I don't want to fall into it, but Cochrane says it is not effective. And role of food allergy, moderate to severe atopic dermatitis, which is resistant. Always think of food allergies and try to look at whether the child is allergic to milk, soya, wheat, egg, fish, or nuts and test for food allergies if required. And instead of immediate reaction can be there or non ig based reaction can be late. And usually it is elimination for six to eight weeks helps in diagnosis. Once you eliminate the food, your dermatitis improves and you can keep it eliminated for six to eight weeks and you'll be able to confirm the diagnosis by looking at the response. And do not take out nutrients from diet empirically as it may lead to nutritional deficiency. But if you have a strong history or strong suggestion, then only you'll stop all these things. And uh, can atopic dermatitis be prevented? Uh, early moisturizing in at risk neonates, early introduction of allergens. These are all papers which are the work which is going on without any confirmed uh, conclusions. Exclusive breastfeeding in the first four to six months, we know that it prevents allergic problems. And administration of probiotic bacteria in pregnant women, two to four weeks before delivery, and infant for six months after birth. All these studies are going on, but we don't have clear uh, idea as to what is responsive. Look at few case scenarios to apply this knowledge. One month old girl was brought to you by mother, her elder sibling had atopic dermatitis and mother is worried about this child. So what is your advice? Definitely you'll require to give him an advice about bathing once in a day, not for a very long time, using acidic or neutral cleansers rather than uh, rubbing. You have to just use wipes at times. Baths are helpful in soothing the itching and removing the crusting. Reduce use of detergents and soaps and emollients are the best applied after bath. And they should be applied to normal and abnormal skin both. And they should be applied at least twice a day, more frequently in severe cases, especially during winter season. So this should be your general advice to prevent in the other seed. Then uh, 
reduce contacts with irritants. We know avoid eating direct skin contact with rough fibers, particularly wool and cosmetics and dusty conditions can definitely affect you. Even the pro, uh, frequent use of soaps can affect you. So use gloves to handle chemicals and detergents. We are having this type of problem in your hands. And triggers are usually infections, bacteria, viral and fungal. Stress and anxiety forms a very big part and lack of sleep. And allergens, certain food chemicals like eggs, peanuts, milk and fish should be avoided. And aero allergens should be avoided and environmental factors should be taken care of. So these are all general advice for any child who comes to you for atopic dermatitis. Case two, three month old boy with patches of dry skin on cheeks, trunk and right leg. Small areas of redness, infrequent itching was shown to you, your comment. Mild atopic dermatitis, daily application of moisturizer twice daily, immediately after bath, mild corticosteroid application for seven to 10 days and avoid irritants. Then you have eight month old child with patchy areas of dryness, occasional areas of erythema, frequent itching, areas of excoriation is on your table and your approach here will be, it's a moderate atopic dermatitis. So avoid flesh, frequent application of moisturizers if required, topical application of mild potent corticosteroid like disonide or maybe your hydrocortisone, Topical calcium urine inhibitors if it is taking too long and may use anti with sedative effect if child is not sleeping and use wet traps. And this child again, one year old child with widespread areas of dry skin, more number of erythema patches, intense itching, areas of excoriation, bleeding, oozing and in lichification, parents beg to you for immediate attention. And here you will diagnose it as severe atopic dermatitis, use emollient or moderate to high potent corticosteroids, anti wet traps, topical calcium urine inhibitors and phototherapy. I think I will stop at this point since the time is over and these are the few steroid uh, lead, uh, atropic skin lesions. And so you should be using more of steroid sparing like topical calcium urine inhibitors in this type of cases. So I think this is all what I wanted to tell you about atopic dermatitis. Mostly I wanted to people understand that don't use strong steroids or potent steroids very frequently, which we keep doing without diagnosing. And then we cause atrophy of skin and atopic dermatitis is a very common condition. And you should know each and everything about the management of atopic dermatitis. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for finishing in time also. And uh, thanks for the detailed talk. Thank you very much, sir.